This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 116 Fly. Caden, thank God you're back! Landry cried as she came out from behind a large boulder at the base of the mountain. Are you okay? You're, you're bleeding! I'm okay, Caden assured her. It looks worse than it is. Blood had seeped through his shirt and made long stains that ran down his arms, though the wounds were no longer actively bleeding. The stinging had stopped as well when he'd reached halfway to the mountain. Now there was only a faint ache. Landry stopped a few feet from him. Her hands lifted and lowered, as she clearly wanted to help him in some way but didn't know how. Did you kill the werewolf? Ross asked, peeking his head around the boulder. More heads appeared over the boulders surrounding the mountain base. Faces that were still pale and pinched with fear had slightly hopeful looks on them now that he had returned. It ran away, Caden said. Ran away? Jasper stepped around a boulder. Really? Just ran away? We fought, Caden gestured to his wounded arms. I won. He decided he didn't want to see what happened next. Caden felt like he was exaggerating a little bit, but Jasper had his hackles up. Yet he had gotten the creature to run from him, but now that he knew that they could be hurt here, perhaps badly hurt, he felt a little less sanguine about facing down any more. There was another roar from up above. Caden's head snapped up towards the peak that was hidden in the clouds. We need to get to Rosiel, Caden said. Uh, how? You expect us to fly? Jasper scowled at him. Gone was a smooth talking southern charm. Gone was the brave, or stupid, belief that he was bulletproof. Jasper reminded Caden of someone who had finally realized that life could knock one down, and now they feared to get back up again. Gina? Caden called to the girl he had saved from the werewolf. She bounded up, no longer looking afraid. In fact, she was beaming ear to ear and came over to him eagerly. Thank you so much for what you did. I was a goner for sure if you hadn't stepped in. Gina gushed. You're more than welcome. But I actually called you over to tell everyone what you were able to do, Caden said to her with a smile. Oh, right. She beamed and turned to the group. In real life, I have asthma, like really bad asthma. I can't walk very far, let alone run. But you guys saw me sprint here. You were like a blur, Harvey said, and there was a touch of admiration in his voice. Gina bounced on her toes. I know, right? It was so awesome. Well, Caden explained to me that we don't have bodies here, so we don't have our physical ailments. We don't have our limitations any longer. So, Landry lifted an eyebrow. You expect us to fly up the mountain, Caden finished for her or at least jump high and grab hold of it. But you got hurt by the werewolf, Landry said slowly, as she pointed at the drying blood. So if we fly or jump and fall, we need to not fall. Seeing everyone's alarm, Caden quickly added, just to be safe, you know. Actually, I'm thinking that maybe only a few people attempt this, or maybe only me. And the rest of you stay here. I'm the only one who needs to talk to Raziel in. Hell no, Jasper was practically shaking. For all we know, you'll go up there and leave us, so... He came here to save us, Landry argued. No, he didn't. He told you he came here by accident. I'm not trusting him. If you all want to stay down here like trusting sheep, then fine, Jasper said. But I'm going up. Caden stared at Jasper for long, silent moments. You know, I've always found that people suspect others of what they would do. Jasper glared at him. Caden turned back to Landry. I'm going to go up. And so am I, because I'm worried that Jasper is going to try and throw you down the mountain, she said. Caden opened and closed his mouth before finally saying, you have a point. Harvey and Ross also chimed in that they too would go as their sister was going. Landry just shook her head and let out a huff. So concerned about me now. After you involved me in a plot that nearly got me life in prison and did trap us in the spirit realm, she said but there was a faint smile on her lips, as if she was glad for their caring. We've said we're sorry, Landry, Ross moped. She's going to be mad for a long time, Harvey sighed. 
Landry leaned in and whispered, This is such an improvement, Caden. No talk about how evil shifters are and how we need to rise up. Since they admitted they wanted to be shifters, it's like they can sort of see how big of assholes they've been. Caden quirked a smile. Jasper doesn't seem to have learned much, though. He's been a poisonous little flower since we got here, she snorted. I should amend that. When we first got here, he was certain it was all a terrible mistake and that we'd be bonded with our spirits soon. Then he became dejected as no one came and nothing happened. Then he raged at how he had been betrayed. But it actually seems to me that the behemoth betrayed everybody. He wasn't special. No, he wasn't, Caden agreed. It told some of the faith that they would be able to bring more spirits into the world. But I don't think it mentioned that they would all be enslaved to it or that the human souls would be kicked out of their bodies. No offense to your mom, but I think some of those faith people would have been fine with kicking the human souls out bit. Landry told him and shuddered at the memory of her former conspirators. We'll deal with all of them when we get back, Caden assured her. She nodded. He tried not to think about how difficult that might be, if it was even possible. Okay, I think I see a path up, Caden said as he surveyed the mountain in front of them. You really think we're going to fly up there? I don't know if I can do the Jedi mind trick of believing I can actually do that, Landry admitted with a frown. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I wasn't very good at flying at first, even when I was in dragon form, he said. But there looks to be a path that curves upwards, and then there are ledges going all the way up. I think we jump from one to the next. Landry gave him one of those famous looks that indicated she was more than a little skeptical. No bodies here, Landry. We can do whatever we imagine we can do, he reminded her. Right. Okay. You go first, she said and gestured towards the mountain path. Cade nodded and he started jogging up it. The path was a switchback as it threaded its way up the mountainside. Landry and her brothers followed him with Jasper in the rear. With every roar from Raziel, stones tumbled down the side of the mountain, and he felt the vibration of those cries in his shoes. Will Iolair be with Raziel? It should be, but I don't think Iolair is, Gaden thought. It wasn't just that he couldn't picture the lair in his mind with the two dragon spirits intertwined. He couldn't feel them, and the timbre of the roars from Raziel was terrible to hear. It was the deepest mourning, anguish, loss confusion. Caden set his jaw and moved faster. The path thinned out and it was time to jump or fly. Caden looked up. About 20 feet above him was a ledge. If he could catch the lip of it, he could easily pull himself up on top of it. It looked deep enough for him to stand and jump for yet another ledge above it. 20 feet, Jasper remarked. The human's first leader had slipped around Landry and her brothers to stand next to him. You don't have to come, Jasper, Caden remarked if you can't do it. Can you? Jasper asked evenly. Cain went back to looking up at the ledge. He imagined flexing his legs and flying up there. He catched the edge and Jasper jumped. He grabbed hold of the edge and pulled himself up. He was then looking over at a Caden, grinning. Coming? Jasper asked. I can't believe he did that, Landy growled. He should have been able to. He's got a good imagination, Landry, Ross said. He believes anything is possible, Ari pointed out as Jasper jumped to the second ledge. Well, if Raziel sees him first, he'll turn him into a charcoal briquette, Caden remarked. He drew in a deep breath, flexed his legs, and jumped. He soared past the first ledge. His arms pinwheeled as he frantically sought something to grab hold of. He saw the second ledge where Jasper was standing. He reached for that ledge and missed. But an arm shot out and grasped his. Caden grabbed hold of it tightly. He had stopped falling. He looked up into Jasper Hawes' face. If you die, we all die, Jasper said, and reached out with his other hand to help haul Caden up. Caden couldn't hide that his legs were trembling underneath him when he was finally safely up on the second ledge. He sank down onto the stony ground with his back against the mountain. Jasper didn't comment on that. Is everything okay? Landry called up, her voice echoing. Yeah, everything's fine, Jasper said back. Just give us a minute. Caden frowned. I don't get... Don't get what? Jasper asked when Caden had stopped and simply shook his head. I don't get you, Caden finished. You're acting like your ego's been crushed and I'm the enemy just a little while ago. And now you jump up a mountain and save my life like you've got all the confidence in the world. Jasper shrugged. Can't a man be and feel all those things? 
I guess. But at the same time, Caden asked, definitely at the same time. Confidence and uncertainty, anger and generosity. Jasper said, don't feel bad. Most people don't realize that they can have two diametrically opposed ideas in their heads and forming their actions. I see, Caden said. Not sure he did. Maybe you do. I've always been a man who feels and acts in the deepest emotions in my heart. I can see it in other people's hearts, too, Jasper said. I was angry, but not at you earlier. Things have not gone to plan. Yeah, you didn't become a dragon shifter. You're just a dupe, Caden remarked dryly. But Jasper only showed a momentary annoyance at his words before shrugging. I took a chance. Believe the wrong people. High stakes for high rewards. And now? And now I read in your heart that you've got a plan, but you're not sure it's going to work, Jasper said. Hence my disbelief and hostility. But then I remembered that we really don't have anything else but you. You really do think that I would leave everybody if I found a way back up there, Caden realized. Of course, it's what I would do. If there was no other way, Jasper answered with a little grin at the end as if he knew how much that answer disgusted Caden but didn't mind. Maybe there's a limited amount of people that can go through. Maybe there's limited time to make it happen. Whatever the limitations, I want to make sure that I'm in the best place to take advantage of them. You're so charming, Jasper, just like I thought, Caden said and started to get up. Jasper offered him a hand. I just see things as they are, Caden. What I said as leader of Humans First was true. I speak to what people really think, what they really feel, what they really want, which is power, control, to be on top, no matter what the cost. And what's funny is that there are two types of people most desperate for those things, Jasper said with an almost dismal smile. Those at the bottom and those already at the top. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Many more adventures await our dragon shifter couple, but not until the next episode. If you're looking for another story full of hot heroes, romance, and magic set in an alternative world, check out the first book of my series, Cinders and Ashes. Cinders and Ashes is an elaborate gay retelling of Cinderella, but it's so much more than that. It's set in a world with forbidden magic, an heir made to work as a servant at his own estate hidden heritage, enchanted wolves, and a king who wishes to marry for love. A link to book one is in the description below. Stretched hand, but he didn't take it. Instead, he got up himself. You might be right, but good people strive to be better than that, to move up, but not at any cost. That's so easy for you to say, Caden. You're on top now, Jasper said. I've been a dragon shifter for only a couple of weeks, Jasper. I was a store clerk before that. And I was happy then, Caden said. Are you happier now? Jasper challenged. I have Valeria, so of course I'm happier. And I lair. I love my spirit. It is an amazing gift, and I know how lucky I am. Notice I didn't mention power, or being on top, or controlling others, Caden pointed out. Then being a dragon shifter is wasted on you, Jasper snorted with a shake of his head. You don't know anything about being a dragon shifter. Caden said, and he looked up at the next ledge. By the way, Jasper, don't get ahead of me again. If Raziel sees you first, the Black Dragon will kill you. Caden then easily jumped to the next ledge, and the next, and the next. He heard Jasper coming up behind him. He only checked to see if Landry, Ross, and Harvey were safely on their way. Soon the rock grew damp as he went higher and higher. Clouds were all around him. They left wetness on the stone. A chill breeze also blew and some of that wet turned to ice. His fingers and toes slipped as he moved higher and higher. He forced himself not to think about what would happen if he fell from this height. Yet his mind kept helpfully offering him images of his body falling and hitting outcroppings of rock until he landed with a splat on the ground where all the people would look upon his smashed body with horror. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Caden told himself over and over, trying to grind the thoughts out. Razia let out another roar. It was the first in a long time, but it was so loud now, so powerful. The mountain shook under it, and Caden's hands nearly slipped off the icy ledge. He let out a cry then, dug his fingernails into the bare stone, and somehow got a hold. The roar seemed to go on forever. When it ended, he was deafened. His ears rang. Caden pulled himself up onto the ledge and rolled onto his side. 
He just lay there and breathed before looking over the ledge. But all he saw was clouds. Everybody okay? Caden yelled down. His ears were still ringing, but he heard back faint answers. Go talk to Raziel before it kills us! Landry shouted from some point below. Keep where you are if you're on firm ground. I'll get to Raziel! Caden shouted back. He looked up and saw only clouds again before they thinned for a moment, and he could see a huge jutting ledge above him in the corner of a cave. The lair! The ledge was double the height of the ones he'd leaped to so far. If Raziel roared again when he was about to jump, or when he reached the ledge, well, it was a very long way down. Just be quiet, buddy, just for a minute. Caden crouched low and took in a breath. Time seemed to slow. He closed his eyes and remembered what it felt like to fly as Iolaire. He could feel the cold air blowing up along the side of the mountain. It would lift him as if he were light as a feather. He would soar. Caden jumped. It was more like he just lifted off. The air took him into its embrace and he was flying. His eyes opened and he was even with the great ledge. He glanced down and his feet were hovering above only thin air. Flying. I'm flying, Caden thought, and he did a loop-de-loop. Laughing wildly, he heard Landry shout, What's going on up there? It's a fine. Caden couldn't help the laughter that bubbled out. I'm flying. You're what? Landry shouted, Flying, Caden answered. Just hold on. I can see the entrance of the lair and, Oh, wow. Crimson eyes stared at him from within the darkness. They were huge, as large as dinner plates. He'd seen Raziel in the flesh, but in the spirit, Raziel was even more magnificent. The massive head came out of the lair, then the serpentine neck that seemed to go on for miles. The front forelegs were as large as tree trunks in the redwoods. The clawed feet clicked on the stone as the black dragon emerged, foot by foot. Raziel, Cain breathed. That head lowered so that those red eyes could regard him long and hard. Raziel, it's me, Caden, Caden said and touched his chest. Can you understand me? Don't you recognize me? The black dragon's head tilted to the side, and Raziel took a deep scent of him. Caden's clothes were pulled away from his body, that inward breath. Those red eyes shut to half-mast for a moment and then widened once more. Caden? The rumbling voice was so beloved. Caden's eyes closed. Raziel, thank God. You should not be here, Caden. You should be with Valerius, Raziel said. He seeks you. The behemoth did something to me, separated my soul from my body, Caden explained. There was a hot dragon snout against his chest. Caden wrapped his arms around that head. He could only span a little bit of it. He laid his cheek against Raziel's scaly head. The behemoth puts spirits in human bodies, but kicks the human soul out, he explained as he petted that beloved black hide. Please tell me that Iolair is with you. There was a whine from Raziel that would have blown him back if he hadn't had a hold of Raziel's snout. I take it that's a no? Caden let out his own pain cry. Oh God, Raziel, the behemoth must have Iolair. And if the behemoth controls Iolair, it will soon control me, Raziel said. No, Caden burst out, his eyelids flying open. What have I done? What have I done if I hadn't been so stupid and gotten caught? No matter how fierce you are, little dragon, you are no match for the behemoth, Raziel assured him. But this is not your fault, Raziel assured him. Where, where is Iolair? Is it still in the spirit realm? Can we get to Iolair? Caden asked. Raziel slowly pulled back so that they were eye to eye. Iolair is here. Feel. You will know. Reach. I I don't feel anything. I... Caden stopped. He did feel something. His head turned as if it were on an oiled hinges. He was looking back towards the crater. It had been empty before, but now... Now he knew it wasn't. And Iolair was still separate from the behemoth. He could faintly hear the cracking of ice. His head snapped back towards Raziel. Let's go, Raziel, Cain cried. We can get to Iolair. But Raziel shook its massive head. If I leave here, Valerius will be powerless. This lair is my connection with him, our bonding. Without me here, he will be in danger. 
I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Dragon's Reign is free for you to enjoy, but not free for us to make. There is a whole team working with me for audio editing, artwork, graphic design, and custom music. Most YouTube channels and podcasts have sponsors and take ads, but because of the kind of content we make, we can't run ads or get sponsors. Instead, we have other ways you can support me and the team behind this gay romance audiobook. One easy way is to buy or borrow my books from Amazon. They are all gay romance set in alternative worlds with vampires or shifters and other magical beings. You may not know that even if you borrow books with your Kindle Unlimited subscription at Amazon, they are free for you, but they still earn us money. The books are published under the name Ex Aratare, which actually means wraith in Romanian. And if you love audiobooks, you can get professionally narrated versions of every one of my books on audible.com. The link to my author page is in the description below, as well as to the first book of the series I think you'll really like. Thank you so much for your support. People like you enable me and the team to keep writing these stories of gay romance, magic, monsters, and true love, and producing this very fun podcast for everyone. Thank you. Thank you.